Many people try to calculate Ben Tennyson's true power overall, but fail to take the time to highlight some of his accomplishments that led him to the high regard fans see him as today. Some of you may be familiar with last year's video where I attempted to power scale every single one of Ben's aliens, and with the one year anniversary of that video around the corner, I'd like to rectify some of those decisions. I was a very inexperienced scaler back then, and honestly still am, but the two collaborators I worked with on that video had two very different methods of scaling, and as I saw them as the experts, I put my trust in their decisions. Now this does not nullify any credibility or respect I have for them, but working with two different scaling methods has led to a lot of downplay. But with learning more about the art of scaling on my own, there's a lot of information in that video I now disagree with. This video will help shine a refreshing light on these transformations, and give you a more accurate representation on exactly how powerful they are. You're going to see feats grow from building level, all the way up to multiverse defying abilities. Hey everyone, Skyer from the Juminars channel. I'll be helping to handle the bulk of the mathematical side of things, and if you like my calculations, you can check out my own content for more Ben 10 scaling and theories. I'd also like to give a special shout out to all of you lovely fans who had given me suggestions on Twitter, Reddit, and Discord on what scenes should be considered. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Swampfire's Strength. Swampfire is an alien you can be confident is in most people's top 5 favorites, and that's not for lack of reasoning. As a blend of pyro and chlorokinesis, you don't really think about his strength as a major factor of his usage. But what about the time Swampfire knocked over the hybrid weather tower? Based on a calculation done by Versus Battle user Liger686, the hybrid weather tower weighs approximately 4.02 kilotons rounded by using pixel measurement in comparison to the size of Swampfire next to it. This also shows how versatile Swampfire can be with controlling his density, as he can make himself malleable enough for bolts to pass right through him and thick enough to perform this feat. Swampfire would not only have to be able to lift the tower, but resist its force pushing back at him and not crush himself, which is why you see him root himself to the ground for proper leverage. This puts Swampfire at tier 8C, large building level. But surprisingly, his strength doesn't stop there. In the Alien Force episode Plumber's Helpers, Manny and Helen attempt to shove Ben into an active Null Void projector, which is a portal to another dimension. Ben transforms into Swampfire after already succumbing to the portal's pull, and is then able to resist the pull long enough to pull himself out. This feat may be unquantifiable, as we do not know the exact properties of this portal. He is effectively pulling himself out of a trans-dimensional wormhole, which, in theory, should act similar to a black hole. Swampfire was already engulfed in the center of the portal, which we can consider as the event horizon, which, if true, would mean Swampfire can resist a gravitational force of 30,570,323 Gs. To pull himself out of the portal, he needs to accelerate himself to faster-than-light speeds, because light can't escape the event horizon. Assuming Swampfire weighs as much as an average adult human male, this means he can lift 2. 0.14 megatons. It should also be noted that Ben was already exhausted from the battle and only just woken up from being unconscious, yet was able to pull this off. If this is true, his strength would outclass both base-sized Humongosaur and max-sized Humongosaur, which would put him at high 5A dwarf star level. However, this is the only time Swampfire does something this bizarre with his strength, so keeping him at large building level or giving him dwarf star level is up to you on how direct you want to legitimate these feats. Number 9, Accelerate Speed. One of the go-to speed feats every Ben 10 fan likes to point out is from Season 4 of the Classic series, where Accelerate was rigging a baseball game. Official media puts Accelerate's top speed at 500 miles per hour, but it seems to be much faster than that. Accelerate was moving so fast he was invisible to the naked eye, and everything around him was frozen in time from his perspective. Accelerate also casually dodges lightning multiple times, such as his battle with Dr. Victor in The Return and in Ben 10 vs. The Negative 10 Part 1 where he was dodging lasers after they were already fired. You can argue that this alone is proof that Accelerate is faster than light, but unfortunately, fiction seems to always downplay the realistic speeds of lasers. Ben 10,000 has stated that he's constantly patrolling the entire planet as Accelerate, traversing it within seconds. Such a speed would make him, at minimum, sub-relativistic. If you traverse half the circumference of Earth within 5 seconds, that's equal to 1.337% the speed of light. The returning strike of lightning is 33% the speed of light, but it is not as fast when it tries to reach the ground. But if you accept Accelerate is faster than light due to being able to dodge lasers, you could argue he's faster than light traveling in an atmosphere, which is 99.97% light speed. Accelerate's durability is also up to par with this, as he's been able to both survive hits while running at the speed and land powerful hits at the speed as well. If we are assuming Accelerate can run at 99.97% light speed, that would mean he could hit things with a force equal to a 60 gigaton nuclear explosion due to the relativistic kinetic force, which lands him at tier 6C, island level. 
Number 8, Atomics vs Ultimate Humongosaur. I'd also like to say that no one really saw Ultimates coming back in Ben 10 Omniverse. Or at least, Ben would never use Ultimates again. But that didn't stop Albedo from stabilizing his transformations and giving Ben another Ultimate Challenge. It took one of Ben's most powerful transformations to put down the force of Ultimate Humongosaur. But exactly how impressive is that famous single strike? This one's going to be a bit of a ride. We start with Vilgax's first robot in the classic episode and then there were 10, which is standing next to some RVs. The average height of an RV is about 10 feet tall. With the robot approximately 5 times taller than that, we can average its height at roughly 50 feet. The ones in Secrets of the Omnitrix are much larger. Using 6-6 as a reference, I estimate them to be approximately 57 feet, which is 14% taller than the previous one. Way big standing next to them is approximately 5.2 times taller, but this is another assumption as we cannot see his feet. This would make him at minimum 296.4 feet or 90.34 meters. Way Big's exact height can have some inconsistencies based on who is drawing him at the time, but we can consider 296.4 feet his true height for the sake of this calculation. This is roughly 50.2 times the height of an average human male, and if humans share the same density as a Toku star, then his mass should be 126,506.008 times that of a human, or 8,855.42056 metric tons. This can also be considered a downplay, as Way Big is also made of an unknown cosmic metal, in which we see Kevin absorbing to prove it has similar properties to an organic armor plating. If Way Big is mostly comprised of this alien metal, and it has a density comparable to titanium or higher, then Way Big weighs about 40,510.2 rounded plus metric tons. Humongousaur is confirmed to be able to lift a Toku Star while still in his base form, and that his max height is about 25 times stronger according to the square cube law. That means Humongousaur can lift between 200 121.4 rounded kilotons and 1 megatons, but this isn't considered a limit. Ultimate Humongosaur is significantly stronger than that, and was shown fending off an army of base form Humongosaurs in the final battle part 1. He also made an absolutely massive crater which sent the collection of them flying, and despite all of the strength that Ultimate Humongosaur has, Atomics was still able to one-shot him. I'd like to point out that this is the very first time Ben had ever used Atomics, and as proven with other transformations such as Diamond Head, Ghost Freak, and Forearms, Atomics will only get stronger with age and time. Atomics then kicked Gwen and the rest of the team into orbit in one second. Atomics would have to accelerate them to 11.186 kilometers per second in an instant, or 0.00373% light speed. Such an acceleration would take a force of 3.13208 meganewtons if happening in just a second. And in another episode, Atomics created a mini sun that can continue to burn without his guidance, casually in the teratons of the TNT range. This places Atomics in at least tier 6b large country level. Number 7, Waybig's Versatility. While we may have figured out Waybig's height, we're still not done talking about this grand transformation. In his first reappearance in the Ben 10 Alien Force episode, War of the Worlds Part 1, we see Waybig lift the Hybrid's hyperspace arch, which is said to be made out of neutronium alloy. The density of this alloy is 4 times 10 to the 17th power kilograms per cubic meter, and in total, the object would probably weigh around as much as the moon. To be specific, 0.5 to 1.4 moon masses. The weight of the moon is believed to be 7 0.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, or 1.62 times 10 to the 23 pounds. Way Big has also casually thrown Vilgax into orbit on two separate occasions. Now, for these next few feats, we're going to pull facts from the Ben 10 Ultimate Alien video game, Cosmic Destruction. But unlike most franchises' relationships with their video games, these feats have some level of credibility to them. For starters, the game's plotline was written by Charlotte Fullerton, who was married to the late Dwayne McDuffie, the showrunner of Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Fullerton was one one of the main writers for those shows as well, and even went on to become the new head writer after McDuffie's passing, along with Matt Wayne. So not only can we trust the word of Fullerton, but the events of the game has even been brought up in the show itself as alternative timelines to Ben Prime, meaning these events are possible, they just didn't happen in this timeline. And as we know with the wonderful omniverse of Ben 10, alternative timelines are canon to the show, and Ben is constantly crossing over with multiple versions of himself, both from alternate universes and alternate timelines. You can even argue that the paradox that appears in the game is the very same one as the paradox that appears in canon, since he's the one that mentions the link between the games and the show. The story feats for the cutscenes of the game performed by these characters have enough behind them to back up their legitimacy, 
But if you'd still like to refuse to accept game feats as valid, don't worry. We will still be using in-show feats for this as well. In Cosmic Destruction, we see Albedo's way big, which scales to Ben's way big due to it being a literal genetic duplicate, standing far outside of the galaxy. Over the course of the game, which is set over just a few days, he makes his way to Earth. To do this, he'd have to traverse 150,000 light years or more in just three to six or so days. That's 9,131,250 to 18,262,500 times the speed of light. This could actually be more since he is seen outside of the galaxy. Ben's way big was also able to react to the incursion's ray, which is a faster than light planet busting beam. This beam was shown to travel from Earth's orbit all the way to Pluto and destroy it in seconds. This feat would have to be over a thousand times the speed of light to accomplish. There is a significant probability that Waybig is even faster than Jet Ray, who has shown to enter hyperspace with enough buildup. Waybig can also shoot out cosmic beams of energy by crossing his arms. In Cosmic Destruction, one of the beams destroys Eris, calculated to be a 5A large planet level attack. To further back this up, let's return to the speed feat of reacting to the Conquest Ray. This feat shows off Waybig's impressive speed, but also his power, as he was able to overpower this ray, which was used to destroy Pluto in seconds. This is calculated to be 18.81 Yodatons, confirming Waybig as 5A large planet level. Additionally, Waybig is also said to manipulate cosmic storms, although is never shown doing so. Theoretically, this could bring him up to tier 4C star level or higher, but we are sticking with 5A for now to be safe. Number 6. Gravitac creates a black hole. This is another famous feat that fans like to point out. In my original video, I disregarded this feat as it was done accidentally. But let's reflect on Ben's progress for a second. Kid Diamond Head lost to Cyborg Vilgax as a child. But years later, Teen Diamond Head was the one transformation that was able to defeat Warlord Vilgax, who was at least 10 times more powerful than Cyborg Vilgax. Ben also underestimated the power of the Annihilark once leading to the destruction of the universe, but when encountered with one again, was able to contain the blast with much more control. Ben has also been very adaptive with his transformations, so I think it's fair to account for this black hole feat, as Ben may one day gain control over it. According to the schematic, this light pole next to the singularity is around 6 meters tall. If you compare that size to the black hole, we can measure it at 4.325-ish meters in diameter. The radius of a black hole is directly dependent on its mass, and can be calculated as 2 times the gravitational constant times the mass divided by the speed of light squared equals the radius. Since we know the radius, we can reverse calculate the mass to be 243.8 times that of the Earth. The black hole also grows to become thousands of Earth masses by absorbing the city Bellawood, but this isn't realistic. The reason Gravitech creates the black hole is because he was attempting to manipulate time using gravity to stop the Time Beast from wreaking havoc on Bellwood. This can lead to the theory that Gravitech may one day be able to effectively pull this move off and successfully bend time using his gravity powers. Until then, Gravitech sits nicely at Tier 5A, large planet level. Number 5. Ultimate Echo Echo's Sonic Doom A battle that defined many fans' love for this two-part finale of the Ultimate Alien second season. In this battle, Kevin had absorbed power from all of Ben's 32 active transformations at the time. His Ultimate Aliens, and many of his friends and enemies, including Gwen, who Dagon deemed as the most powerful being in her dimension. I repeatedly mentioned this statement in my videos because it carries quite a bit of weight to it. Dagon had already taken over hundreds of dimensions at this time, and enslaved them all using his demon Lacubra army and his esoteric of followers. Dagon, above any other antagonist in the Ben 10 franchise, would know what he's talking about. And Kevin beat her in a fight and stole her energy. Kevin should have the durability and survivability of Waybig, Cannonbolt, Diamond Head, NRG, Water Hazard, Wrath, and Armadillo Drillo combined, not to mention Swampfire's regeneration or Goob's elasticity. But in his battle with Ben, Ultimate Echo Echo Sonic Doom Attack was all it took to neutralize Kevin. If Kevin was hit by only one more of the 13 discs we see to perform this move, Kevin would have been killed. Given Waybig's durability feat, this should mean that Ultimate Echo Echo can crack planets apart with his Sonic Doom. To back this up further, Ultimate Echo Echo can also contain nuclear explosions, with reaction times quick enough to catch them after detonating, very casually. This places Ultimate Echo Echo Sonic Doom at Tier 5A, large planet level. Number 4. Upchuck Eats a Dwarf Star In the classic series final episode, Ben 10 vs. The Negative 10 Part 2, Ben stops the Forever King from binding himself with the sub-energy by using Upchuck to consume the energy and then blast it upwards, destroying Mount Rushmore. In the episode, the sub-energy is stated to be 20 times stronger than our solar system's sun, which is a G2V-class yellow dwarf star. This would easily put Upchuck's sub-energy feat at tier high 5A dwarf star level. Upchuck's tongue alone has a pretty impressive lifting feat too. In the Ben 10 general 
Generator Rex Heroes United Special, Rex defeats Alpha by containing him in a dense sphere for Ben to bring back to the Null Void. Rex's brother Caesar Salazar directly gave us the density of the sphere, over 30 grams per cubic centimeter. Rex also exclaims his astonishment as the sphere must have weighed over 10 tons. Number 3. Feedback fires the Big Bang. As we enter the top three feats, we go over perhaps Ben's most famous non-Alien X feat, where he contains Maltruan's universe in his hands and fires it back. Maltruan had used a modified Annihilarg, which are used to both create and destroy universes, to build a new universe in his own image. After detonating, Feedback was able to shrink the Big Bang back down to the size of a basketball and hold it together for a significant amount of time before firing. Feedback's Big Bang Kamehameha would be equal in energy to that equivalent of the universe's mass, referring to Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. The observable universe has an estimated mass of 3 times 10 to the 52nd power kilograms. This would make it equal to 2.7 times 10 to the 69 joules, or in other words, 644.423 billion trillion trillion yoda tons of TNT, which is equal to 26.963 Yodafo, a pho being a unit of measurement relative to supernovas. This is, however, only accounting for the ordinary baryonic matter of the universe, which amounts to 4.9%, so it could be argued that the true power of this beam is over 20.408 times stronger. This is also ignoring the fact that the observable universe is not the whole universe. There is an unobservable portion that is much larger than our visible little bubble, and according to one purely hypothetical estimate, the unobservable universe is at minimum 50 million times larger. In some fictional franchises, universes are infinite in size, so it is possible that Feedback's blast was infinite in power. However, in the Ultimate Alien episode The Forge of Creation, Paradox takes the trio outside of their own universe, where they can visibly see the entire thing. It is impossible to tell from this clip how far they are, and how big the universe is, but this does help confirm that Ben's universe is not exactly infinite. Although, this can also be interpreted as a failure of perception, as perhaps we as the audience, or even the trio themselves, view the universe as finite in our own perspective, because we are literally unable to perceive infinity. Nonetheless, based on the information that we do know from prior, Feedback's Big Bang feat can at least confidently land itself as high tier 3A universe level. Number 2. Clockwork absorbs the Chrono Sapien time bomb. One of the major things fans and non-fans like to point as a potential weakness of Ben was his inability to survive the Chrono Sapien time bomb, a device that can perform crisis level damage by destroying the infinite universes and timelines surrounding them except for the one they're currently in. While this can be chalked up to Ben yet again underestimating something he didn't have enough knowledge about, as Paradox, Techno Clockwork, and Alien X have proven it is indeed possible to survive such a feat, people fail to bring up that Clockwork alone was able to reabsorb the entire explosion and reverse its effects with ease. This feat was performed by no watch Ben, yes, but he was wearing Ben Prime's Omnitrix, and he himself is a genetic duplicate of Ben Prime, and also states that the second he turned into Clockwork, he was able to figure this out via the Soto Bro effect. Ow. Let me guess. Chrono Sapien time bomb? Paradox was right. Once I transformed, I could see the Soto Bro effect. Just figured I'd suck the weapon back in. This proves that Ben would most definitely be able to perform the same feat had he decided to turn into clockwork rather than astrodactyl. The Chrono Sapien time bomb was destroying an infinite number of universes and timelines, yet clockwork managed to pull this time wave back in, reversing the destruction. This feat, at a minimum, is a tier 2C multiversal level. It should also be noted that Maltruant, another Chrono Sapien, was able to take on future Ben, Gwyn, and Kai by himself, as he is much more experienced with manipulating time. Clockwork is also able to be upgraded by other galvanic mechamorphs, as shown when Ben's 10 and 23 merge together to escape Mad Ben's dimension. To help beat a dead horse, Green Lantern may have been able to survive a crisis, but Clockwork was able to reverse it. Before we hit the number one spot, I'd like to go over some honorable mentions. But first, I'd like to let you guys know about our second channel, The Rust Bucket, where the Ink Tank and I have been streaming five times every week. We have a podcast, a few drawing shows, and some gaming going on. Personally, I stream every Tuesday, where lately I've been drawing an arsenal of alien commissions that fans have requested. If you'd like one, please contact me on my website below. We've also been pouring our souls into our latest series, and beyond, which takes you on a documentary-style tour through the multiverse, exploring areas from Ben 10, Danny Phantom, and more. In our latest episode, we visit the Ghost Zone. I'm very proud of this episode, so please check it out if you have a chance. Starting in just a couple weeks, I'm going to be releasing a mini-series of videos as I begin to go over how powerful Ben truly is, starting with a video on Ben without the use of Alien X, followed shortly by an Alien X-centric video. Sometime after those will be four videos focusing on several aliens in specific categories. Ben's smartest, fastest, strongest, and most powerful. If you're interested in that, check out my channel. Now let's run through these honorable mentions. 
points. These were chosen but didn't make the top 10 because there isn't enough information to put a calculation on it, but they are still impressive enough to mention. These are not in any specific order. Number 1. Alien X cuts through the Quantumalia force field. Sitting atop our number one spot is by no surprise an Alien X feed. There are many things Alien X has done that can be debated for the number one spot, such as reversing time, casually destroying half a solar system, and recreating a universe. And if we list each feat individually, his actions would take up all of the top 10 slots alone, and then some. This feat was chosen because it was a direct quantifiable feat that we can use to accurately scale Alien X's power, or at least a fraction of it. To understand this, let me break down the three key factors. 1. The Contamalia, the gods of many universes, arguably this entire multiverse, are at least 5D. Their fifth dimensional forms are imperceivable to our three dimensional eyes. So whatever looks at them interprets them to look at whatever holds the most sway in your heart. For Ben, it's smoothies. Go figure. The Contamalia have some evidence to support them being above 5D, but we're sticking with 5D to keep it simple. Skurd, who has latched himself onto Ben's Omnitrix, is able to sample Ben's DNA and form weapons out of it for Ben to use either in his human form or his transformations. So anything Skurd does is only possible if Ben himself is able to do it too. The Annihilarg, which again can destroy and create universes, is kept behind an extra dimensional barrier that is said to withhold the Annihilarg for protection. And as Quoted by the Contamelia, it is impossible to turn off or destroy. Skurd then proceeds to form a Celestial Sapien sword that cuts through the barrier on the first try. This is surprising to the Contamelia as they've never seen anything like it. This can show that Celestial Sapiens are above the Contamelia who are 5D, but is further confirmed by the fact that Celestial Sapiens are born outside the multiverse to begin with, in the Forge of Creation. Skurd's Alien X sword is a high tier 2A multiversal plus feat, but you must also keep in mind that this sword is only a fraction of Alien X's DNA and power, and lacks the sentience Alien X has as a transformation, and the nyomniscience wisdom that Bellicus and Serena bring. Alien X at full power is at minimum tier 1C, which is low complex multiversal. However, I personally believe that you could actually place Alien X higher than this if you wanted to argue that you could classify the Forge of Creation as an outerversal realm, but I'm not actually going to argue that. Tier 1C is about the same conclusion that last year's video came to as well. Thanks for having me on, Kiro. This is Sky, signing off till next time. Bye. Thanks again, Sky, for co-hosting this episode of Tracing the Border. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything going on with the Ink Tank and I, please visit my social media, or consider donating to our Patreon, where you will get weekly updates on Five Years Later and other projects for only $1 a month. Shout out to the patrons who are already taking advantage of this. You guys are great. You can also join the Discord and talk to other passionate fans and keep the conversations going. And be sure to visit my website to check out Five Years Later, where it all began. But until then, Keep it fizzy.